Hello, I'm just going to walk through with you how to use this device, Markov Variations. So, um, this device needs to be used in Live 11 and it works with these variations here. Like in this rack we have these presets for macros called Variations. Here I have just a simple rack of a filter with a few variation presets. Pretty simple. So to get uh, this device working with uh, whatever rack you want to control, you'll first um, deal with this rack placement parameter, and that just says where is the rack you want to work with in relation to the device. So right now this rack's to the right, so I'll press right, and then we see this appears. But if I had it set to parent, that means um, that it has to be inside the rack. So I can put it in the rack here. But oh, and you can also do it to the left, but I'll do it to the right for this video. And we see once it detects the rack, it, it loads all these visuals and parameters. So what the central visual is, is uh, we have these nodes, these circles, and we have one for each variation. See, we have four variations and four circles. If I added another one, um, we'd have five variations. Um, but let me delete that. Because, all right, um, and then, um, okay, so these circles represent the different variations. And then how this device works is it just transitions or moves between the different variations using a Markov chain. And that is to say that there's certain probabilities for which variation it will go to next. So let's start with this first one, this dry one. So we're here at dry, and then we can either go to here, the high pass, or here, the low pass, or here, the band pass. And now I'm back at dry. And how we decide which one we'll go to is with these sliders here. So whenever you click one of these nodes, it will load its probability sliders, transition chances. And so here at the dry effect, we have this slider, which corresponds to itself. We have this slider, which corresponds to this state. This slider, which corresponds to that state. And this slider, which corresponds to that state. So the higher the slider, it is, slider is, the more chance it has to go to that state. So if I turn this all the way up, it just will keep going back to itself each time we go next. And to go next, we can press this button. So I keep pressing this button, nothing happens because it keeps going back to itself. But if I turn the probability up to this state, then when I click next, <laughs> it, it goes to that state. It took a few clicks. Um, but yeah. OK, now it's working better. Um, so um, and that's kind of how this device works. You set certain probabilities for one state or one variation going to the next. And then you have different ways to go between them. Um, and those ways are described here. So one is just clicking this button like I was doing. Or you can, and you can map this button. And I made a device that lets you um, play MIDI notes and map to a trigger button. I'll show you that at the end. Um, but the other ways to transition are you can use transient detection and set a threshold for the transient. And then when it detects transients from the input audio, it will trigger the next variation. Uh, let me do like a round um, style here so it's more obvious. So I'll just have this first variation go to this one. And then this next variation go to the one next to it, and so on, so that they just kind of go around in a circle. And this goes back to the beginning. There. Now you can see they kind of point in a circle. And if I click next, it just keeps going around. So now I'll have the transient detector. Yeah, so now it's just transitioning whenever it detected a transient. A cleaner way to do it, uh, it, well, it depends on what you want, but is to just do it on beat. So we can set the interval. It can be synced or in a milliseconds. And then, yeah, then it just transitions at a regular interval.
and um, you can randomize that a bit the interval so you can get the more variation um, and then you can and then you see how we're just snapping to the values well we can also glide to them um, so here um, I turned up the glide time and now we see as it moves there's a bit more gliding between the parameters And we can also, oh, it already is randomized. <laughs> um, but yeah, we can also add the randomization to the gliding. And to get more variation in the gliding. Um, so yeah, that kind of settles with this section. And hopefully you get an idea of here. Uh, this little colors thing at the bottom just lets you change the color palette. Um, right, so... Here again, <clears throat> we have the, the probabilities of the variation going to another one, and you, you can draw them. Um, you can also just randomize the one you're selected on with here. By the way, you, s you select the different variations by clicking on the circles. And if you double-click them, it will load the, that variation. So if you double-click, it will just load it. Okay, anyway, um, so you can randomize the currently selected one, or you can randomize all of them to get quick uh, differences, or you can press clear all, which which sets them to a high probability of them going to themselves. So they just, that's what this little circle is. Um, yeah, because these lines, I guess I should describe them, these lines are the probability of that variation going to another. So if I went here and turned this all the way up, you see the circles all the way bright, and that means it, it will go back to itself, most likely. If I turn that down, the circle gets dimmer, and if I turn this up, that line goes bright, pointing to that variation. If I turn this up, that line gets bright, going to that variation. So the lines, just the brightness of the lines and the circles uh, reflect the probabilities. So yeah, so we can randomize. And then below this section, there's this thing called default and bias. And this le lets you set a default state. So one corresponds to the first variation, the one at the top here. Um, so you can set which one's the default. And then you can set a bias. So that just says how likely is it to actually just go back to the default and ignore these probabilities. So bias kinds of kind of bypasses this whole Markov system and just says, like right now it says, 50% of the time we'll just go to the second variation, which is this one. And the other 50% of the time it will use these probabilities. So this lets you just have like a dry state or a default state you always want to go back to more often, no matter where it's at. And if you turn it all the way down, it just ignores this whole thing. Um, spray kind of randomly sprays the values each time you load a variation. So here I'll load the this uh, this band pass, and we can see the values are like this. I'm loading it; they're not changing now. If I spray it 50%, each time I load it, look, they're a little bit they're a little bit different each time I load it. So spray gives you some variation um, to your your variation presets when they're loaded. Um, okay, I already talked about the glide. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how the device works. I can kind of let it play and you can see it a bit. Yeah, you just dial it into what's going to work. Um, another few things to note are, is this reload button. So it detects variation changes well when you add or um, delete ones. But if you said, if you changed the values of a variation and then saved it again like that, this device can't detect it because detect it the API doesn't 
allow you to detect those things. So if you do something like that, you'll have to press reload again. Or if there's any weirdness, try pressing reload, and that just rescans the values. And then the last thing I want to mention um, is that if you're using a MIDI um, device, let me create MIDI channel, and um, you want to detect MIDI notes, you can use this other device I give you. Um, it's included in here, and it's called this note trigger device. It just detects note on messages and will trigger um, a parameter with them. So it's useful for mapping the next button with, with this. So if I have an analog, I guess I've got to make some variations real quick for this to work. Um, okay, we've got a few variations here. So now I'll put uh, this for the left. Okay, now I can trigger this. I can map this to the next button. And then every time I press a MIDI note, now it triggers that next button. Let me minimize this. which could be pretty useful for depending on how you have things set up. Okay, I, I think that pretty much covers the device. Um, I hope you enjoy.